Now we're on project challenge number three of your second year Da Vinci experience. And this is where we're going to put everything together. We're now going to make a phase locked loop. So we play with the voltage control oscillator, we play with a phase comparator. So we're going to put it all together. We're going to add in a loop filter, it's actually a low pass filter, and that's going to be a closed loop, the whole thing. And what's going to happen is that our voltage control oscillator is going to follow whatever we do with our variable reference oscillator. Let's make it happen. Well, this is the circuit down here. So we use our good old favorite, the CD4046 phase lock loop IC, which has got most of the things inside. We're going to have our reference oscillator. It's going to be a little Schmidt trigger oscillator on the side here, which we can adjust with a variable resistor. That's going to go into one input of our phase comparator. And then what's going to happen is that the other input of the phase comparator is going to come from the voltage controlled oscillator. So this time we're going to use this oscillator. Now what's going to happen is that the phase comparator is going to compare the phases. That's what we expect. But instead of just going straight to some uh, to the control input, we need to just do a little bit of smoothing because if you remember from last time, the output of the phase comparator is a square wave or a rectangular wave, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Which, if you put that straight into the voltage control oscillator, it's going to go high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low. It's going to be just wild. You don't want that. So what we need to do is smooth. We want to find out what the average DC level of that beat frequency is. So if you remember from last week, we had that little diagram there, we've got the kind of beating. What we want to do is actually just get that kind of wave which is representing the highs and lows. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing with the loop filter, which is this little resistor capacitor circuit. Right, enough talk, let's make it. So first of all, let's do our reference oscillator. So we want the oscillator to be quite fast this time. It's going to be too fast to see. We're going to have a 100 nanofarad capacitor going into the input of this left-hand oscillator here. Lovely. Then the other input is going to be going to plus 9 volts because we want it to be working all the time. So we just stick a wire in there and up to the 9 volt rail. That's great. Now, we need to do our resistor feedback and that's going to be via the variable resistor. That's easy. So we go from the output to one end of the variable resistor. Then we go from the middle of the variable resistor to back to the capacitor input. So that's all complete. And what we need to do is we need to show the output. And we go to segment A of the LED display. Now you're not going to actually see it oscillating because it's going to be too fast, but you'll see what we're going to do in a minute. So that's that oscillator complete. Now let's make our voltage control oscillator happy. So we're going to just do like we did earlier. We're going to have 10 nanofarad and 100k. So that's fine. We find our 10 nanofarad and we put that between pins 6 and 7 of the CD4046 easy as that. Then we find a 100k resistor and we're going to put that between pin 11 so it's 9, 10, 11 and ground and ground is up here somewhere. So that's the oscillator happy except we also need to in uh, just make sure the inhibit doesn't actually stop it working so that's the one here. We've got the inhibit input here. We want to make sure it's at zero volts. So that's fine. So that's six. So next door is pin five. And we just put this down to zero volts, just like that. Now, let's look at the output of the voltage controlled oscillator. That's on pin four. Now, pin four, we're going to take over to segment D. It's the bottom segment of the display. So pin 4, and that goes to D, so it's A, B, C, D, just like that. Now, we need to compare the 
two frequencies, just like we did last week. So we have two oscillators last week. This week we've got two oscillators as well. So we have the oscillator from our reference. It's going to go into pin 14. So the output of our reference oscillator is going to go to pin 14. 16, 15, 14. Very good. And then our VCO, our voltage control oscillator, the output is on pin 4 and it's right next door to the input pin 3. There must be a reason why they did that. So pin 3 and pin 4 reconnect together just next door with a ridiculously long lead. There you are. So that's done. So that means then we've got our oscillator on one side, the reference oscillator. We've got the voltage control oscillator working there. Um, we connected up segments A and D, as A is for this reference oscillator. Um, D is for the output of the voltage control oscillator. So now what remains is we need to put our loop filter in. So what we're doing then is we are going to link a 10K resistor to pin 2. So that can just go to some convenient spare column. So for pin 2 to a spare column over here somewhere. Very good. And then we take a 10 microfarad capacitor. Now there's some theory about loop filter design, but it's actually quite easy just to make a simple one of what we're doing here. So just take the values for granted, please. So that means now we've gone through the resistor. Capacitor down the ground is a standard RC low pass filter. Then the output across the capacitor is going to go to our control input pin 9. So the output of our loop filter goes to pin 9, just like that. Now, if I haven't forgotten anything, it should actually perform. Now, the thing is, at the moment, it will light up the LEDs, but it'll be so fast, we can't see what's happening. So what we need to do is we need to actually show by sound. So we're going to use a loudspeaker. Now, just one thing, which uh, just to be complete, I'm just going to show what the phase comparator output's doing. So that's pin two. There, we can just put onto segment G, so D, E, F, G. So it's just for completeness, you've got one oscillator shown at the top, other oscillator shown at the bottom, phase comparator in the middle. You may give us a little bit of clue as to what's happening. Now, we're going to do something a bit clever with the loudspeaker. Uh, we're going to try and listen to two tones at once. Now, instead of having to use two loudspeakers, which is a bit uh, troublesome, um, we can actually just use one loudspeaker. And what's going to happen is we'll use the Darlington driver, and uh, which is driving the LEDs, and that can drive the loudspeaker. Now, uh, in the first week we were doing this, we used a 100 ohm resistor. Well, we're going to be now putting two inputs in, so two 70 ohm resistors. We don't want it too loud. And the other thing we're going to do, we're going to put a same idea as a loop filter. We're going to put a 10 microfarad capacitor here, because what's happening is that we're actually putting square waves into here which tend to have a lot of high harmonics you probably learned that elsewhere so let's get rid of some of those because it won't be so easy to hear the the frequencies so we'll put a 10 microfarad capacitor there so let's quickly do that so take out the 100 ohms that i had before I'm just going to go and put two 70 ohm resistors that's two of 270 ohm resistors uh, in to a uh, between each output and a convenient column. Let's just put it in the correct one. So it's actually A. The other one's going to be D. A, B, C, D. And that goes there. And then we just take a nice 10 microfarad capacitor. And that's just going to go between the speaker output and ground. So there's a speaker output there. And we just pop it over the ground over here. It's convenient up the top there. And finally, we just have the last speaker going between plus 9 volts and our output. 
So you should hopefully be listening to what's happening with both oscillators. So let's see if it works. All right, it sounds like there's one tone there and you've got all the displays lit up here. Now, what's actually happening? It just sounds like one tone. Does it mean that only one oscillator is working? Let's find out. We can just take out one wire. Let's just go listen a little bit closer to the loudspeaker so you can really hear the sound. That's great. So take out one wire. Okay, a bit different there. Take out the other wire. So the note is da. The other one, da, da. Now the slight problem is that <laughs> when you got those two notes sounding together in the same loudspeaker, it sounds like a different note. But what's actually happening is that one oscillator, d, da. Slightly different tone, but it's still the same frequency. So what's actually happening is that the voltage-controlled oscillator is following the reference oscillator. So what we're going to do now is just increase the reference oscillator and keep going and see what happens. Now, can you hear there's a squeal? Can you hear now that very high sound? That's the reference oscillator following what I'm doing with the screwdriver here. And the poor old voltage controlled oscillator is completely lost. Poor thing. So let's bring it back down again. Now they lock again. It sounds like one turn again. So what's happening is that we now have the voltage controlled oscillator is locked to the reference oscillator. It's a phase lock loop. Right the way down it can follow. But if you look at the middle segment now, when we go unlocked, it can flicker a little bit and so on. And in fact, with a little bit of extra components, we can actually make a lock indicator. So it can tell you whether or not it's locked. And just a turn off here, and just a little bit extra here, if you do have an oscilloscope to look at, when the waveforms lock together, the reference and the VCO are nice and happy, all locked together. Very nice. If we go too high with the reference frequency, see there's a higher frequency now here, complete confusion with the, the voltage controlled oscillator. It's unlocked. So there you are. And at the bottom of the sheet, there's some theory about how this is used in radios and we're using divide, frequency dividers and so on. I leave you to have happy reading. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope you've very much enjoyed your Da Vinci experience the second year.